This week on Sailing the Recipe, we head to the US Embassy to have our interview which should allow us into the US of A. I sniff out one of the best golf courses in Bahamas and get blown away by its beauty. We set sail to Berry Islands, meet up with some singing friends, and Olivia talks exams as she goes through exam week. And I finish off with a hand-caught mahi-mahi Pokemon. Welcome to another episode of Sailing the Recipe. I'm Colin and this is my wife Bex. And together with my three daughters, we put our Michelin star restaurant on hold during COVID to live a life on a sailboat. Meet our new floating home, The Recipe. We're on a journey of a lifetime to discover new places, new cultures and new people, as well as exploring what the world has to offer under the sea. Hit that subscribe button to follow our journey every Sunday and see where our recipe takes us next. Been fed? Yeah. Water? Well, I'm looking smart this morning. There is a reason for that. Today is a big day for recipe, well, for us three on board anyway. We are going to the United States Embassy uh, to get our, well, to have our interview for our US visas, our B2s. Um, it's taken about six weeks to book and arrange. There's a lot of paperwork to do. Uh, I just hope I've got everything in place. Got my passports, got my photos, got my uh, application form printed out, got my cash, of course. Um, so once we get this application sorted, hopefully we'll get a stamp in our visa, which means we are free then to go to Miami. However, that's not, uh, it doesn't end there. We have uh, a lot of hurdles to jump over to get into Miami. I've got to send a letter to the uh, customs border force i've got to uh, arrange a face-to-face -face meeting when i get there uh, i've got to arrange a marina to get there i've got work to oh my there's a lot of work to do so anyway first things first let's get to the embassy i always get a little bit worried going to places like an embassy or something that's very important for the boat without yes, bex right. bex is normally the one organized it's got all the paperwork Got all the passports in place, got the emails, corresponding documents from other countries. Uh, and I think the biggest fear for me is getting to the embassy, realizing I don't have this document or that document. Where's my photos? Where's my passport? So, um, with fingers crossed, without pegs, it hopefully it'll go smoothly. Whilst Olivia was hard studying for her exams, I took the opportunity to tick another bucket list off. As a king golfer, playing golf in the Bahamas is everyone's dream. Sailing past this course over the last couple of days, I made it my mission to get myself around it. It didn't disappoint. The beauty of this course was outstanding. The greens are like billiard tables. The views and sceneries are spectacular overlooking the turquoise ocean. This was a first for me to see not only lots of sand bunkers, but actual shots being played off the beach, onto the greens, while local sunbathers were enjoying cocktails on the beach. Yeah. 
now look there's like oh, my there's uh, light cloud sky and then dark heavy clouds it's quite light over there but as to come over here oh, ho, 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 ho. It's starting to spit now it's starting to rain it comes from nowhere Bahamas are notorious for having these kind of little squall thunderstorms, especially as the year starts to warm up. We are coming to the end of April. So it's exam week. A bit stressful as it's all internet based. Uh, my last exam is today. I had my English, that went all okay. It was a bit stressful, I got it in just in time. Geography the next day, that was very stressful because the internet died and I got it in late, so I'm not sure what's going to happen with that one. Hopefully it'll all be okay. Science one, that went fine. Maths, well, we've moved to an anchorage and um, there's no internet at the moment. Well, so, we moved closer, didn't we, thinking it's going to be better. It's yeah. actually turned out to be worse. Yeah. I like that I'm doing the monobo, actually, because I think at school, at school, it's more, you're more stressed. I think these are the first exams I'm not actually stressed about, except for the internet part. The only stressful bit is actually getting them in on time. And why are you not stressed about it? I mean, you're not... You're not enclosed in a room with loads of other students just doing the same exam. Um, also, straight after the exam, just go for a swim. <laughs> it's good. It's good. Sooner. Is it not nice doing it with your friends though and talking about it afterwards and say, hey, you know, how did you get on? Well, there's always a thing with talking to my friends about it because. When you do exams with your friends, then you talk about, you know, what did you put for this answer, and then you realise you've put the wrong one. So, um, <laughs> at least this year, I don't have that. But, um, I don't mind doing them on a boat. At least they're done. Okay, so we've just done a five-hour sail from Nassau today. Um, quite rough, actually, so no one's in the mood for a real hot meal. So we're just going to do a bit of a small Pokeball. So, Pokeballs for us is quite a common thing that we do. Some little bowls, some nice iceberg lettuce, and what I do is I just make a little mix of some salad, some tomatoes, some cucumbers, and some braised cabbage and a beautiful avocado. Avocados on this island are amazing. So, um, and then I'm going to use my wahoo, sorry, mahi mahi that I caught a couple of weeks ago. And this is the belly, if you remember, I used the belly um, where it's a bit more kind of fat content to do curries with. So I'm just going to do a little quick spiced pan fried fish with some of this um, Pokeball salad-y concoction. In my curried spice I've got some hummus that the kids made. It's quite loose but it's good for coating, coating the fish. Okay. Sprinkle of two of Beautiful saffron. Can you see it? Yeah. Oil. I've got some cumin. Coriander. Got some curry paste here. Curry paste just goes straight in. Bit of salt and pepper, ready? So the trick is, is to get it all emulsified, all the hummus, the oil spices, that's going to really coat the fish beautifully. Yep.
to get my oil nice and hot. With the fish, we want to caramelize the outside of the fish. Uh, and just as it's going past the medium rare stage, I take it off the heat and let it finish off there with no heat. There's, a, there's going to be enough residual heat in the, the pan and the fish to just to finish cooking it all off. So if you can imagine cooking like a, a cube of, of fish, you want to char the outside. There's a lot of, a lot of heat in this pan. And uh, so when we think the fish is underdone, turn it off and just let the, the heat do the rest of the work. Nice and gentle. And therefore the fish will be lovely and moist. It won't be too dry. In fact, it won't be dry at all. And, uh, and that's how one in it. What I do is when I pour the fish into the very hot oil, I don't touch it. You know, you don't need to stir, start flipping it, tossing it. I want the fish to be nice and brown, so I just leave it in the pan without touching, caramelize the outside of the fish, and that's it. So while that's cooking, I can get on with making my little dressing. Okay, so in the bowl I've got some ginger sesame oil emulsified it together and then I literally add all my little selections. I've got some finely chopped cabbage, I've got some tomatoes, some celery and some cucumbers and they all go in. Helping in salt. What I like about this is it's almost like a comfort food. You know, I should be wearing a white jumper. Can you believe I'm wearing a white jumper in the Bahamas? It's actually, the sun's going down. It's getting a little bit, not chilly, but it's cool, should we say. So, the, all the salad bits have been dressed. Got some nice salt in there. My fish is cooking. Give that a minute or two. So what I've got here now is some cross lettuce, little pockets. So I'm gonna just put them in there. These avocados this time of year is amazing. They really are creamy but firm. Oh, amazing. And all I'm going to do is put them over my salad. So, this is the caramelized thing I'm talking about. I mean, the fish is really juicy. I can just see all the juice dripping off the fish. But, so that's how you want it. So now we can give it a little toss and a tear. The saffron's really coming out. Beautiful smell. And we'll just give it a little, a little toss. And because the fish isn't overcooked, it's not breaking up, it's still holding that. And now the shape is all good. So because the fish is still undercooked, not going to break up into little pieces. That's plenty enough heat and I'm going to turn it all off. Turn the heat off. Oh, there we go. Okay, so now the fish is beautifully cooked. Give it a little squeeze, it all breaks off in my hand. Start to load up the side of the bowl. It smells incredible. Nice and healthy, easy to make, I'm using up stuff from the fridge.
I like Pokeballs, they're nice, clean, refreshing, and they taste good. Or, like Jess says, 